Okay guys, back with a short video. So I recently got this uh, Intel Core i7 8086K, which is the uh, 40th anniversary edition of the Coffee Lake 6 core CPU. And I tested it briefly on water without deleting and it, it uh, ended up being like somewhat okay, not really strong, but not like complete crap either. So I was maxing out at around like 5.2 GHz with 1.34 volts in Cinebench R15 on the Z390 Dark. The old engineering sample that I tested like back in the day when these CPUs were the newest on the market, the, that CPU did 5.4 GHz in Cinebench R15 at around like 1.3 volts or 1.3x something volts. And but that, uh, that was of course with deleting. So uh, I wanted to see, like, does deleting improve me anything on this 8086K? Because some CPUs just they just don't stay stable if the temperature rises too high, and even 75 to 80 degrees can be too high temperature to remain stable. So let's just give it a go. I'm sure I will do at least 5.3 under 1.4 volts, but I doubt I will do 5.4. Uh, 5.4 is generally like. Uh, the value that uh, tells you that you have a good CPU, but of course you need very very, uh, very very strong cooling as well if you want to run that kind of level even in just Cinebench. So let's use my old but really amazing deleting tool by Cree21 from our Finnish tech media uh, forum called IO Tech. It has uh, multiple top pieces to delete to delete various CPUs like Ivy Bridge, Original Haswell, Sky Lake, KB Lake, Coffee Lake, and even the uh, the Ivy the Ivy Bridge top fits the newer like uh, ninth generation Coffee Lake CPUs, which are soldered. So you can even delete a soldered CPU using this same tool. So that's very very handy and very good purchase because it wasn't that expensive when it was still available. So let's take the CPU out from the plastic packaging and see it on camera so we can see that it's the 8086K from week 4 of 2018. And let's just place the, the CPU inside the deleting tool just like that. Very, very easy. And here we have the Coffee Lake, KB Lake Coffee Lake top piece over here. It has the uh, small cutouts over here that match the Coffee Lake CPU IHS and let's place the uh, top piece on top of the deleting tool just like that and it will sit just fine if it's the, if you are using the correct one so they match really well together and you if you are a very strong person you can even delete some of these CPUs with just by hand so uh, uh, if you have very good uh, if you have a lot of force in your fingers you can almost delete one of these CPUs without using an Allen key. So that's quite funny. But of course, I recommend you use some kind of an Allen key to do this. It will be much easier. So let's just go finger tight first with fingers like that. And let's use an Allen key to finish the process. So we should hear a snap when it's done. And now it's done. Of, uh, well, quite often it doesn't make any sound when it's done, but you can see that it's deleted right now. So it gave loose. So let's unscrew the plastic screw, turn the top piece back to its original position, take the top piece out, and let's take the CPU out and let's remove the IHS with fingers. And that's how the original thermal paste looks like. So very, very easy thing to do and very safe to do the deleting process this way. A lot more safer than to use like a knife or vice or something like that. So definitely get a dedicated deleting tool for these CPUs if you want to delete or if you want to delete multiple CPUs from multiple generations. It's not that big investment and a lot safer than using something something like dodgy method to do this. 
deleting tool is not very expensive compared to these CPUs. So it's quite wise to invest a little bit of, a little bit of money to get the whole thing done safely and well. But yeah, so once you have done this, you only have to clean the uh, die itself as well as the uh, IHS. If you are using a direct die frame or something similar, then you must remove the uh, old glue remnants around the CPU die. So you can see the plastic over here. You have to remove it if you want to use direct die frame or something like that. If you only uh, use the original IHS, it's not like 100% must to remove the glue remnant. So you can just clean the die and the IHS itself, put your own thermal interface material solution on top of the CPU die, like liquid metal. Liquid metal has the best thermal performance and it will give you the best results overall. Just use liquid metal, manually spread it on top of the die and then just place the IHS back onto the CPU, uh, like align it correctly and let only let the motherboard retention bracket to hold the IHS in place and it will work just fine and it will give you the same end result as if you had the glue removed or the whole IHS resealed on top of the CPU. But yeah, so that's how you deal it. An 80 an 80, 86K or 8700K CPU successfully, please give a thumbs up if you like to see how to deal it a CPU once again. And other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.